Sorry about that guys, I was part way through the video for you and uh, the miss is called, so we uh, cut it off. Um, but yeah, like I said, I was talking about the purple style and the green hysterix and stuff, looking in bad shape. And yeah, I, I just couldn't work out what was going on. It was a real, it was a real bloody mess. And yeah, every, every, all the parameters were bang on. I, I tested every, literally everything that I could, I tested. I used the Salafit test kits, um, they're really good actually. And uh, yeah, it was was wasn't showing anything. So I was having a good chat with one of the guys that I met on the um, Facebook Marine Keeping for Beginners group on Facebook. A uh, really really knowledgeable guy actually, really decent guy, and he's helped me a lot with this tank, Simon. Really really good guy. And um, he he recommends sending off sending off a Triton ICP test just to see if there was anything in the water, if there was any metals or anything in the water that that was throwing everything anything off. So I did so. Right before I sent it off, I, I took obviously took the samples to send off for them, and at the same time I tested everything. So I thought, right, well if I'm sending this off, I may as well also use the opportunity to um, see how accurate the Salafit test kits are. So made a note of everything on my log and sent them off. Anyway, a few weeks later, I got the results back, and unfortunately, it, it didn't really show that there was anything wrong with the tank. There was a tiny bit of zinc in the water. Uh, but they recommended just sticking some Roafoss in, doing a water change, just to absorb up the, the metal. And the only thing I can put that down to is the fact that I make my own water. And perhaps there was one or two on the TDS that I'd not really noticed uh, when I was making my own RO. That's all I could think of. So anyway, so I, I did all that and it still didn't come back. It still wasn't coming back. It was still looking awful. The, the stylo was looking worse by the day. The green hysterics actually started to strip back. And yeah, I knew they were kind of on their way out and I thought, oh, I don't know what's going on. Anyway, I came in one day and I'd actually got a flame angel in this tank at the time. Came in and there he is pecking away at the, the A-cans on the, on the bottom. And he, he was really going at him as well. And I thought, oh Christ, that, that's what's damaging the A-cans. That's what's doing the damage there. So at least I knew that was him that was doing that. Um... The flame had actually been at my local fish store for the best part of 12 to 14 months. He'd only got one eye, bless him, and that, that, they just couldn't sell him because he'd only got the one eye, so he lived in their coral tank. So he'd been in their coral tank for 12 to 14 months and he was fine. So I thought, well, the, miss, the missus absolutely loves him. I thought, well, this, this is a family tank, so I'll, so I'll get the flame. Put him in and he was fine. He was absolutely fine for probably four months or so, maybe a bit more. And I came back off holiday, and yeah, it was carnage. And it turned out it was him. He was actually killing all the acans. He was he he was pecking away at the stylo. He was pecking away at the hysterix. And he literally killed it. Killed the lot. All of it. Killed everything. So and I, and I couldn't get him out of the tank either. The fish place was going to take him back. But I just could not get him out without dismantling everything. I just couldn't get him out. And I thought, well, he's he's killed all that now anyway. That's gone. Uh, maybe I'll just have a, an LPS tank or something because he doesn't seem, seem to be touching the Duncans or the, the Hammers or anything. Anyway, uh, quickly changed my mind on that. I thought, no, I, I really do want a reef tank. I really want to have a, an SPS, some SPS and some ACANs and things like that. So a deal came up on, on eBay. We wanted a, a tank from a little girl's room because she absolutely loves the fish. So we got the tank. And I thought it's a good opportunity to move him on. I mean, it took me three days to get him out of this, and I did have to dismantle everything in the end. But we got him out, got him into her tank, and um, to be honest, since he's gone, this tank has just got better and better and better. So it was a good move. And now I've actually got, there you'll see, purple stylo. Polyps and that are doing great. And again, I think that just thrives off stable parameters. My, my alkalinity is at a steady 9.3. My magnesium's at 1360 at the minute. I do run it at 1350. It's a touch high at 1360, but I'm not too fussed about it. I'm not too worried about that. And the calcium's at 460. I do run that at 450. It's a little bit high at the minute, but again, that's at 460. Um, what I've also just started doing, and it's only happened since these SPS frags actually went in. So there's the purple stylo, a green barley slimer I've got. Two of them, it came off the same stone to be honest. When I bought it, it was it was on a it was a double one on one stone. Um, but there were so many uh, pests and stuff that jumped off the rock when I when I was doing the dip and I am fairly sure there was eggs and stuff on the bottom of that rock. I just literally fragged them off the rock and uh, and put them in myself. 
because I just didn't want to risk putting things like that into the tank. I used the Seachem Reef Dip. That's really good stuff actually. It's It's got iodine in it as well that helps with the healing. So that's good stuff. And then I've got there, that's the green stylo. And to be honest, that is getting better by the day. The, the polyps are just all popping on that. Colour's doing great. But I think the other reason that, that I'm having such good colour in the tank as well is I'm also running the Red Sea Coral Colours uh, Trace Elements program. And I've only started running that since I've started having to dose the calcium. Now, at the minute, I dose 45 mil a day of alkaline sea. I dose 7 mil a day of calcium. And I dose 20 mil a day of magnesium. And that keeps that all in check. Uh, before, I wasn't having to dose calcium because the water changes were just keeping it, keeping it up. Um, and it, I, I didn't want to go down the route of just, oh, there's the box. I just had to go at that fish. Look, there you go. So um, I didn't want to go down the route of getting the individual test kits for iodine and things like that. Because I've, I've heard that the iron test kit, you'll struggle to ever get a reading above zero. I've heard the potassium test kit's a bit of a, a, bit of a faff. So I thought, no, I'll, I'll just, whenever I start dosing calcium, that's when I'll start dosing the, uh, the coral colours. Now, it says you need to dose one mil of that for every 10 mil of calcium that you're dosing in, during the day. And... With me dosing 7 mil, realistically I should be dosing 0 0.7 mil of each of the trace elements that come in that coral colours kit. I'm actually dosing 0 0.45 mil of each element. And that's just because I, want, I wanted to dose on the side of caution and um, not overdose the tank with things. With, with this tank I've took everything slow and steady, as much as I possibly can slow and steady in terms of dosing and stuff. I don't believe in just chucking loads of elements in and... And hoping and praying I, I literally test two to three times a week uh, just to keep on top of it and I think that's why I've had the success I've had so far is just because I've been on it I've been on it with the maintenance I've been on it with the testing uh, I've took it steady on the dosing and um, yeah it's just, it's just gone really really well it's gone really well so obviously when it comes to the 12 month mark let's see where where all the growth is that's the reason why I've, I've done this by the way my brother came around the other day and he actually thought I'd bought loads of new corals. Um, but it wasn't, that they've just grown that much. But because I'm in the office all day, I work from home and this is in my office, I just don't really notice the growth. But he came in and he, he literally thought I'd bought, he thought I'd got another one or two zinnias down the bottom. But it's not, it's just grown. It's just gone that well. Right then, so now I've gone through all that. Oh, sorry, the, the wave makers. I've got an SW8 there. You can't see it because it's underneath that an enemy protection guard. But... That's an SW8. It's probably a bit overkill for this system, but I bought it with the eye to eventually I'm going to upgrade. So it's something I'll be able to transfer over onto a bigger tank. Uh, that one behind there, at the minute, that's an SW2, a JBO SW2. That was in the top right corner. That's the one the enemy hit. Um, I had an SW8 there, uh, but the problem was it actually, the controller broke on it about a month ago. So I'm just waiting for that to come back from DND because that was on the warranty. So when that comes back, that will go there. SW2 back up there, and I'll be back up to full strength on the flow. I like quite a bit of flow. The system likes to, uh, seems to like quite a bit of flow, so we'll be going back with that. Okay, so let's just go into the sump, show you the sump. Sorry about this video, by the way. It's a bit jumpy and stuff, but it's mainly because I'm not used to doing this kind of stuff. and never really thought about doing it. Right then, guys, um, that's the sump. And the skimmer I'm using is a Bubble Magus Curve 5 uh, skimmer. Again, that is that is overkill for the system. That, that skimmer is rated up to 500 litres. This is only a 170 litre tank. But again, I did it with the view to an upgrade at some point. So, yes, I got an overkill skimmer. But to be honest, it, it, because it's overkill, it does a really, really good job at keeping the system clean it, it really does I mean my nitrates and phosphates are consistently five parts per million for the nitrate phosphate runs at 0 0.03 obviously that that skim is doing a really good good job with that along with that I've run no pox uh, red seas no pox just one mil a day if it starts to drop below five mil on the nitrate or 0 0.03 on the phosphate I'll just dial the, the no pox down to about half a mil as soon as it starts to creep back up I'll, uh, creep um, back up again I'll, I'll just I'll just dial it down 
So that's all I do. Um, really rate that skimmer, it's decent. Um, that there is the Bubble Magus uh, Mini 70 reactor. I originally bought that for carbon. Uh, to be honest with you, you don't really need to run carbon in a reactor, it just kind of grinds together, blocks the, blocks the internals, and yeah, you could, I'll just put it, keep it in a bag behind the skimmer now, before the return section, I'll just keep it there, and that does a good job. I'm using the Red Sea uh, carbon at the moment, but I've also used the ATM Supernova carbon. That's great stuff as well. The only reason I'm using the Red Sea stuff again now is just because I've run out of the ATM and I've got a fair bit of the, the Red Sea stuff left. The, the difference I can see between the two is the ATM stuff just seems to last two to four weeks longer than the, the Red Sea stuff. Um, this Mini 70 reactor, I'll be honest, it's pretty crap. The way it works is the water goes through the pump at the bottom, goes up through the reactor, through your media, and then comes out the top and just spits water everywhere. That's all it does. I think I bought it for 40 quid. Um, it's crap. Uh, the, the only thing I do with it now, uh, I don't put any media in there whatsoever. Don't run anything in there. But what I do do is I put uh, filter floss in there. And, and that just seems to polish up the system quite well. That's the only reason I'm running it. So that filter floss has been in there a couple of days. Um, I'll probably change that out either tonight or tomorrow. I'll, I'll see what it's like. I don't, I don't like filter floss getting clumped too much because obviously that can start leaching stuff into your system. So it's an okay, it's okay, but a 40 quid reactor just to run filter floss in, it's not worth it for me. Um, that there is the Kamoa X4 uh, Wi-Fi doser. I'll be honest, I wasn't going to go for a doser, I was just going to manually do it. Uh, but the problem I was finding was that now that I'm dosing more and more of the solution, I didn't want to just dump it all in one go. Because obviously that's when you're going to get swings and stuff by doing that. So um, I thought, right, ugh, I'd rather just dose it in equal parts out throughout the, the rest of the day. And the only way I could do that, because obviously I'll, I work full time for myself, the only way, way I could do that was to get a doser. Now, the, what worries me about doses and those stuff is obviously that that's controlling the liquids going into your system. If that fails, you could potentially either dose a shed load of stuff into your tank, which is obviously not going to do your tank any good. I mean, I saw one poor guy on the uh, on the Facebook group. He got, uh, I think he got an Aquamedic doser, and it failed and dosed a whole bottle of Nopox into his system and it killed everything, it killed all the fish, the coral, gone, live rock, that all the bacteria gone, all the sand, everything was dead, he had to start again, poor chap. So, I mean, I don't dose no pox through this, all I'm dosing through this is the uh, calcium, red seas, calcium, magnesium and alkaline sea, and through those dosing containers there, that's all I do. And I also keep the refractometer in there, um, just to keep it at the same temperature as the sump. Okay, that there is the controller for the JBO DC 4000 return pump, um, which is there. Sorry again, the terrible video, but that's there. Again, that is overkill for the system, really, really overkill for the system. But again, I did it with the upgrade in mind, so um, yeah, I decided to go, go a little bit. A little bit heavy on the on the return, and I run that as you can see from the control. I run that just under fifty percent, and that's more than enough to be honest. It does a really really good job. Really really easy to clean as well. Take apart and clean. I think I've took it apart and cleaned it twice in ten months. And again, I just I just dropped that in white vinegar and let let it run for half an hour in the white vinegar. Gave it a good scrub with a toothbrush, and it was good as new. Really good return. So, yeah. There we've got the Simply Aquaria uh, temperature controller that, that runs these two Fluval Hydor Theo, not Fluval, sorry, Hydor Theo 200 watt heaters. Um, they're great heaters to be honest with you, and they're, and it's also a great temperature controller. Obviously, I've, I've got it running from uh, 26 up to 26.5 degrees, and it keeps it within that range. As soon as it gets to 26.5, turns the heaters off, when it hits 26 it turns the heaters back on, and that's how it works. Uh, the only thing I have found with those is the office at my at my home, um, it's downstairs and it tends to get a little bit cold in this room, and last winter we'd gone on holiday for a week, 
and my neighbour called me to say that the temperature had dropped to 24.9 degrees or something like that. Well obviously considering I run it at 26 there's something definitely wrong there. So I got to just chuck in one of the, the Fluval 300 watt spare heaters I've got and that, that sorted it out and it got it slowly slowly back up to the 26 degrees that it should be. And I couldn't work out what it was and I got back and what it turned out was because it had got so cold in this room the 200 watt heaters just weren't keeping up with how cold it had got they just they just couldn't heat the water quick enough to as it was cooling down so I'm okay at the minute because it's the summer but come the winter I'll be swapping out one of those 200 watts for a 300 watt to Hyde or Theo and uh, that should be fine that should be okay it should be all right uh, in the bottom I've, at the minute I'm running three pounds of Miracle Mud to be honest I was, a friend of mine on the group recommended that to me and uh, it basically releases slow release trace elements into the water helps with the uh, fish and coral health apparently and um, also adds a bit of a uh, denitrifying um, process as well it acts a tiny bit like a refugium I suppose but yeah so at the minute I've got three pound in there now they say that I should for this size system we should put £10 in and I'll be honest there is no way £10 is going in there no way it's, it's just not big enough that's the only issue with the Red Sea Reef 170 the sump's not that big you can't do that much with it so not without get, cramping it up anyway I, I really like a simple system as you can probably tell I've hardly got anything in it so what I'm planning on doing is getting another lunch box with another £3 of it next to that one and then raising that reactor up and sitting both on top so the skimmer's already sat on top and then the reactor will also be sat on top um, I'll probably get a, a skimmer stand or something to, to stand that on and that'll be that um, what else have we got? oh yeah we've got the Tons um, Nano ATO Osmolator uh, that just runs into the uh, into the reefer uh, ATO tank and as soon as it drops below that set point, I'll just turn one of these lights off. It's getting a bit bright, actually, isn't it? As soon as it runs into that, um, runs below that set, set level, that will fill back up. Now I've got a, a 25 litre drum of uh, RO water sat next to my desk, sealed drum next to my desk, and it just constantly tops that up. And that, that's just because I was finding that I was topping that up every two to three days. I didn't mind doing it, but when I was going on holiday and stuff, and my neighbour was having to do it, it, I just, I just wanted to make her life as easy as possible. Because I was already grateful that she was looking after my tank for me, so I, I just wanted to make things as easy as possible for her. So, yeah, now all she really has to do is just come in and feed the fish. She doesn't have to dose anything. She, she, she doesn't have to do anything and feed the fish. Whereas the first year we went away, she had to do a lot of stuff for me, which and it just wasn't fair. So, so yeah, so that's the sump. If there's any anything that you need to know, any any questions you've got about that, just give me a shout, um, and I'll and I'll see what I can do to help. Okay, so let's turn the light off. Okay, so as you can see, 